what's the best gift you've ever received? Maybe you walked outside on your birthday to find a brand new bike with no training wheels. Or like me, your parents got you guitar lessons so you could learn to play your favorite songs. Maybe you got to take a trip someplace awesome. Wow. Your favorite gift might even have been a video game console or the chance to spend the day with your favorite person. These are all fantastic presents, but eventually things break and the fun experiences are over. You have to go back to everyday life and wait forever until Christmas or your birthday comes around again. But there's one gift you never have to wait for. One gift you can open every single day. In Ephesians, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Faith in God is an incredible gift from God. When you have faith, you know that God is always with you, even in tough situations. When you have faith, you learn to trust God for wisdom as you walk through your day. And when you have faith, you know that God has promised to make everything right in the end for those who follow Jesus. When you choose to open God's amazing gift of faith, you begin to live with more hope and show more love. Then others can see God at work in you. That's why making a move in faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud.
Ooh, yeah. Whoa! What you doing there, buddy? I'm, I've been thinking about getting another job as a sign spinner. Huh. You know those, those people who stand on the street corners yeah, yeah, and they yeah, spin yeah, yeah. the no, signs, no, no. you know the, it's, a, it's a piece of cake. Come yeah. here. Yeah, you got, me, yeah, I got it. Oh, you. okay, sure. See, the trick is to get enough momentum. Oh. oh. Yeah, you gotta catch it. No nope. part of it. Nope, nope, right. nope, nope, nope. The trick is to get enough momentum. Oh, no. Nope. You're not even. Momentum! Momentum! Oh, no. Momentum. Oh! Momentum. The trick is more momentum. Oh. No! Okay, it's okay. It's no, okay. No, it's, it's not. I, okay. Just do it this way. Ah! Oh! oh. I'm Brandon. I know, John. And welcome to the So and So Show. Yeah. What you got there, pal? Oh, I got a personalized bobblehead of me. I like it because he always agrees with me, don't you? <laughs> oh, I can't stop staring at it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so uh, we're a good part of the way through the summer. And we have made some moves, haven't we? <laughs> Indeed. Hey, but that got me to thinking, almost all of us use a GPS on our phone nowadays when we move places, but have you ever wondered who the voice was behind the GPS? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Who is the voice behind the GPS? Well, we're gonna find out today. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Have a seat. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, tell us who you are and what you know. My name is Rain McNally, and I'm a navigation concierge service. A what? A navigation concierge service. Uh, oh. What exactly is a navigation concierge oh, service? Oh, I'll show you. Okay. Oh, great. Right. Love this. A big map. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh, is that a corded phone? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of phones. So whenever someone needs direction somewhere, mm -hmm. they just show their location and call me. Oh, that sounds... Complicated. Yeah. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. Like, mm. There's no reason why your GPS should be so impersonal. Mm. With Wayne McNally's Navigation Concierge Service, you'll never get lost again. Oh, excuse me, just one moment, please. Sure. Hi Chuck, where are you heading? I'm going to 7008 Patterson Street, Rain. Okay, perfect, I'll get you there. Thanks Rain, you're the best. <laughs> okay, Patterson that, Street. I mean, that, that really is pretty nice, but doesn't it you know, get confusing when there's more than one person asking for directions? Not at all, I'm a great multitasker. Oh. Uh, Chuck, I got your location. You wanna turn left on May Avenue in about three miles. Huh. You'll see Ruth Steiner on the corner. You should try the Western Omelet when you get a chance. <laughs> one, one second, Chuck. Where you headed, April? I am like trying to get to Lasseter's Grocery Store on the corner of Orange Street and Apple Road. All right, go ahead and turn left on the blockers to get started. All right, thanks, Rain. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I. Oh, Chuck, you're gonna want to make a right at the next stop sign. Rain, you're the best. <laughs> sure thing. Uh, so, Rain. I... Oh. Hey, Sally, where are you heading? Going to 465 Tolbert Street. Okay, Tolbert. Oh, do you mean Talbert? Uh, no, Tolbert Street. All right, um, just go straight. Uh, wait, 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 it's becoming a gravel road ahead. You'll be fine. Oh. Uh, one moment, please. Hey, Graham. Hi, I'm, I'm looking to get to the Empire State Building. Well, just go north. North? Um, north. Uh, what? Where uh, am I? Uh, oh no, 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 no. April, you've gone too far. Uh, d turn around. You're gonna make it out to you, 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 make a U turn. But I'm like on the interstate. On the interstate? How'd you get on the interstate? Hey, I went down that gravel road and now I'm stuck in a creek. Well, it's. And there's a bear! <laughs> oh, I. Uh, 
Uh, what? Hey, Rain, help me get home. You, you need to learn how to get home, Bird. How do you not know how to get home? Give a man directions, get him there a day. Teach a man directions, he could find his own way. Wait, We've what? been over this. Just use your best judgment. Uh, April, what are you doing? You told me to like do a U-turn. On the interstate? Yes. Actual interstate. Turn back around, that's not safe. <laughs> are you okay? I see flashing blue lights. Uh, uh what? You, hey, um, Kid Bear's climb tree. Hey, which way is the Empire State? The which north? You said Please, north, right? I just want to go home. Um, Rain, what should I like do? I'm just sitting here pull in the over. interstate. Pull over. Everyone, pull over. <sighs> Thank you, everyone, for using Rain McNally's navigation concierge service, getting you here, there, and everywhere. Unfortunately, we are experiencing technical difficulties at our home office, and we'll get back with you just as soon as possible. That was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. I'll say that, 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 that it could have been worse. I think it's a thoughtful idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I always felt so alone when I was driving. Mm. I thought maybe I could help others not feel that way. Oh, mm. see, that's beautiful. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's just maybe not so many people at the same time. Maybe? Yeah! Oh, and here, here! Put that on your dashboard. It'll help you not feel so alone. Oh. Um, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hello, friends. Oh, he called us friends. Well, yeah. You are my friend, buddy. Kellen? Yeah. Yeah, you're my friend, too. Well, now that we've established that, Kellen, have you got a Bible story for us today? I sure do. Well, then take it away, friend. Our story today comes from the book of Acts. After Jesus was resurrected and left earth, a bunch of people heard the good news about Jesus and began to follow him. They started something called the church. Maybe you've heard of it? One of those earlier followers of Jesus was named Paul. Now, Paul taught a lot of people about Jesus, and some people didn't like what Paul was doing. So much so that they had him arrested. We pick up the story today where Paul is a prisoner on a ship. He's being transported a long way through the Mediterranean Sea to Italy. When they arrived on an island named Crete, Paul had a message for the commander of the ship. I can see that our trip will be dangerous. The ship and everything in it will be lost. Even our own lives will be in danger also. Well, you're the pilot. What do you think? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <sighs> well, they began their journey. And it was exactly as Paul said. There was a terrible storm. Hold on! I'm trying! We need the ship to lose some weight! Start throwing supplies overboard! The storm was so bad, it sent the ship in the complete opposite direction from where they were planning on going. They ended up just drifting with the storm for days. After that, Paul was visited by an angel and had some good news. I beg you to be brave. Not one of you will die. Only the ship will be destroyed. Say what? I belong to God and serve him. Last night, his angel stood beside me. The angel said, do not be afraid, Paul. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all of those sailing with you. Men, 
Continue to be brave. I have faith in God. It will happen just as he said. But we must run the ship onto the beach of some island. Say what? The beach of some island. Now, the people on the ship were probably feeling a little terrified at this point, but Paul knew even in the craziest of storms, God was with him. And because he knew that, he was able to remind others as well. Paul blessed food and gave it to the crew, and that gave them some hope. The crew then cut the anchors from the ship and set sail for the beach. But before they reached the beach, they hit a sandbar. The ship could not move, and the back of the boat was broken into pieces by the waves. At this moment, the soldiers had a plan to kill Paul and all the prisoners so they wouldn't escape. Guess we should uh, kill the prisoners, eh? Don't you dare. If anyone can swim, let him jump overboard and swim to land. Whee! And it happened just as Paul told. The ship was destroyed, but everyone was saved. When they reached the land, it was cold and raining, so they built a fire. But while Paul was sitting there, one of the craziest things happened. Um, is that snake poisonous? Um, yep. Oh. oh, the prisoner must be a murderer. Yep. He escaped the storm, but God won't let him live. <laughs> nope. He's definitely going to die. Yep. Nothing's happening. Nope. He must be a god. Crazy things kept happening to Paul. They stayed there for many days, and they were treated with kindness by the people of Malta, which is the island where they landed. And with God's help, Paul also was able to heal so many people on the island. After they stayed on the island for some time, they boarded a ship and they continued on to Italy. The end. Epic story. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy all the things that happened to Paul in this story. But he never lost his faith in God. Nope, it was incredible. It probably could have felt pretty lonely out there, but Paul always remembered that God was with him through the good and the bad. Man, how could he do that? Great question. It sure is. Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. I'll see you next time. Reveal the question. What helps you remember that God is with you? I think back to times when God had done things in my life, even when I couldn't see it at the time. All right, that's great. For me, it's good to have friends remind me that God is with me because I sometimes forget. Yeah, well, but just because God is with us doesn't always mean that things will be easy. Uh, that's true, think of Paul. Oh, yeah. yeah. But there is some comfort knowing that when we put our faith in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that'll last forever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I totally agree. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm a bobblehead. <laughs> oh. You know, like from earlier, we had the bobblehead. You know, that's me now. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all the time we have. Thanks for watching the So and So Show. It's fun. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You should. Try. You were doing it earlier. You should try. I know, it. but I had an actual bobblehead. Now. I, well, now you do again. Okay. I'm an actual bobblehead. Ow, that kind of hurt. Well, that, you have to hit the bobblehead. Oh.
running through my mind when I can't see and I wonder why I got so much faith inside but sometimes it collides with my fears and doubts and I need help to trust when I'm blinded by what I cannot see but the evidence in front of me helps me to believe